Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Knack. We've got some superior live tournament action coming at you right now. It is going to be beginning on... What is this? Oh, GSL's Antigua Shipyard. Windy, is this your favorite map? It's mine right now. I love this map right now. I like this map a lot. Um, All-time favorite map right now, would, though, would be Met Metropolis, the GSL map. Uh, oh, I think yeah. we should bring that into our map pool for next month. I oh, think that would be a great idea. map. Yeah, uh, we. It is definitely the most interesting map that's come out in a while. Uh, but Antigua Shipyard, very good map. It is a Blizzard map, probably one of the best Blizzard maps that's come out uh, since the beginning of uh, the you know initial release before or, beta, or after beta. So I have to hand it to Blizzard. And Lobber, going to be going for that Forge Fast Expand. No all-in to start it off, so I do like this play. Antigua Shipyard, not the best map to do that play on. Very long yeah. distance from base to base. Guaranteed cross spawns doesn't show much variance in it, so right. we'll have to see what happens. Yep, this will be a nice play. Interested to see Lobber Forge Fast expand, but I'll tell you, man, I'm super pumped for this matchup. This it's going to be good. a long time coming tonight, and this is the finals in tonight's Open Arena Tournament. Man, I, I, to see Lobber and Jutai here is actually quite refreshing. A good PvZ I haven't seen in a while. Uh, no, me neither. I, you don't, we don't see too many PvP finals, isn't it? Or PvZ finals. That's because uh, Zabra or Seosion or Spades last week is always just those Terrans. are so, so good. <laughs> I know, man. Those OP players, right? <laughs> yep, yep. And uh, you know what? I really hope Lobber wins tonight. I am rooting for him. I think he'd be a, he's one of my favorite players to follow. I love him because he's just such an honest guy. Uh, going for the 14 Nexus. Wow, he is... Wow. Uh, That's risky. That is very risky. Um, no, but Jutai is taking his expand here, so it may pay off Ooh. for him. Wow, maybe he's kind of aware of Lobber's build, um, thinking that he might have one gone for that pylon first, but this is going to open a lot of problems for uh, Jutai. Lobber, if he's smart, if he gets to his point quick, and Jutai doesn't know it's uh, cross crossbones only. I know, he's, actually he's been scouting both of the other positions first, so Lobber is apparently aware he is headed straight to cross positions, and he's going to get the lucky scout out, right? <laughs> Yep, yep, and he and if he's smart, he will go for a cannon rush, man. There's no reason not to go for a cannon rush as Protoss, Agreed. knowing that your opponent has gone hatch first. Oh, absolutely. Very, very little they can do to deal with it. Cannon's yep. two shot, um, lanes, and does he see the hatch? He does see the hatch. Does he turn around right away? I think he's going to check for that spawning pool. It should be back out immediately. Just going to check for gas, perhaps. And yep, uh, checking for oh. gas, which is smart play. Um, he is seeing that it's a gasless play so far from Jutai, and it is. Relatively late here. Ooh, yikes. Yeah, I think his opportunity for the cannon rush has now vanished. Um, although he did get his expansion up before his opponents. Well, Cannons can finish I mean, up. He, what you can do on this map is is you can block yourself into this back door. You can put this one is cannon true. there, and then you can put um, uh, you know, or, sorry, a, a what do you call it? Uh, but it looks pylon. like he's not going to do it. Yeah, so a pylon. Matter. Yeah, pylon. That's the word. But yeah, put some pylons in, block yourself behind the mineral line, and I've seen it work really, really well, but it it is a bigger commitment financially here. And that's why I think he's making the smart choice to go ahead and back out. He's content seeing his opponent taking that early hatchery. He knows that his forge fast expand is gonna be relatively safe in the time yeah. being. Ooh, wow, this is a really early four gas so This is four gas before five minutes. Oh wow. Is, so we're gonna I'm gonna say double start. Tech. Yeah, double Stargate or maybe even DTs. And two probes and gas up top. That's really interesting. Look at that. Both the simulators have two probes in it. That has to be intentional. Lumber's not the kind of player to folly on something like that. Right. So if I'm not mistaken, this is definitely some kind of refined build that's geared towards Stargate play. Uh, second gateway going down, actually, instead of a cybernetics core. Interesting. What is he up to? I'm not entirely sure, but uh, we're going to see that cyber core going down just now. And uh, this is kind of a bad situation. He doesn't have anything to deal with the uh, the lanes that are poking away at these assimilators. He's actually getting a plus one on his uh, his forge. So maybe he's going for that uh, Kiwi Kaki third base killing uh, style where you get uh, a whole bunch of zealots out real quick and you just go and kill that third base of Zerg, which has gone up for Jutai. Still no gas out for him. And actually a macro hatch going down. Jutai, you're insane, my friend. Wow. You're, that is... Greedy beyond greedy. <laughs> Cybernetic score finishing up. Uh, if Lobber is as good as a player as I think he is, he will definitely send out another scout to go ahead and see if that third one down. Um, and that Ling's still working away on that assimilator, man. Yeah, he, he's determined. And look at this. Two guys in gas for Lobber all around, except this one. These two have three up here. Now only two down here. Um, 
Interesting that he's doing this. I'm really wondering what he's up to. He hasn't made any units. He's just now starting double sentry production, yeah, getting at that plus one. He's chrono boosting the plus one, so I do expect oh, to see him get You know what I'm thinking? What? I'm thinking this is going to be like an eight gate all in. It could very well be, but uh, uh, yeah, I guess it could be. I'm, I'm trying to figure out why he got his second gate so fast, though, but here goes. Oh, it's Twilight Council, so it's going to be DTs here. Either oh, that that's or, not, or it's a actually big delaying play. Lane. Warp gate, what is going on? Robert, what are you doing? I don't know, man. I'm guessing, I have to guess DTs if he is, if he's not getting his warp gate tech out. <laughs> um, I mean, he's gotten two centuries. DTs would be a smart decision. He's now up to five centuries. Why? Why no This is definitely is an interesting build. I mean, I'm seeing something that I've never seen before. How about you? Uh, th I've never seen this warp gate now just starting. I really have to worry if he's, um, Done that by mistake or intentionally? Uh, Twilight Council finishing up. Does he start any upgrades right away? Does he start any kind of tech? Uh, Sporn Crawler is actually going down, and that's kind of the problem with getting so so much gas early on. You're going to give yourself up to Sporn Crawlers no matter what. Detection right. will go down for uh, the Sporn Crawlers will go down for either detection or to deal with any kind of air harass. Exactly. Still, you exactly. do exactly. Get... I mean, it's now it's eight and a half minutes in. This is perfect timing for Sporn Crawlers to be going down, and Lobber has outlived. His usefulness, his you know, his timing window there, but still nothing out of the Twilight Council, and he's chrono boosting his empty Twilight yeah, Council. It's a seven gates plus a forge plus a Twilight Council getting nothing. Yeah, he's chrono um, boosting it too. So I, so I think he may do the corner. I wonder if he's a little bit nervous. Oh no, there's eight gates now. There's eight gates. So this is an eight gate all in, like I thought. Um, how many Wait. workers is he up to? Fifty. Uh, very late though. It's usually when you usually want to have this hit around uh, ten minutes, maybe eleven at the latest. Uh, getting blink now. So just like you said. Uh, I don't know, man. This is interesting, uh, Lobber. I've never quite seen anything like this. Yeah. I mean, this is... A, I guess I can see it now as an 8-gate all-in, but that seems strange to me, considering what we've seen from Lobber, but I guess maybe he's choosing it because of the, you know, the the, the way of the you know this particular map, I guess. But uh, here comes a couple Ling's going to poke up this ramp. They're not going to make it too far. There's plenty of sentries here. And uh, we're going to see... I don't know. This this is just so delayed, in my opinion. I just don't understand what's going on. Yeah, I'm I'm quite curious. I mean, you're a Protoss player. How do you feel at this point in time with this build? Uh, he has to have something. I don't feel like Lobber's the kind of guy to to botch such a basic build like this. He has to have some kind of tiff about it that's going to. Well, usually if you're going to go eight gate all in, number one, you don't get your your second gateway right away. You get seven gates later, um, yeah, and yeah. so you're chrono boosting. You chrono boost out your first warp gate. Uh, for units, you and then you don't chrono boost out your cyber core, but you get your cyber core right away. That's a standard standard way to open for an eight gate all in. And right now he's moving out across the map with a good bunch of stalkers here, but he doesn't have nearly enough considering that he's invested so much in blink. He does have a lot of proxy pylons on the map, though. You can see yeah, he has he one, two, three, uh, three pylons out now. And he even has this one on the corner of his base to get a little bit quicker at having this be taken all out. And this is a pretty formidable force. These units all have plus two attack on them, too. Do not do not forget that. Yeah, so these true. Zerg units, which don't have much of an upgrade, Roach is, uh, plus one carry is going to be done. But Jutai, he's on uh, 61 drones, man. He has a lot of units out. So, and uh, good force fields coming out of Alaba are going to uh, zone off his opponent's army. And kind of prevent the leans from getting in there. You can deal with the Roaches pretty well. Plus two uh, Stalkers against Roaches actually are really good. Yeah. They take um, two less shots to kill. Which is, here comes all the drones, Ling's putting all of them. Great force was out of Lobber. All those sentries he built so early on are so now high on energy that he really doesn't have to worry about too much um, being you know cautious with them. You can see he's zoned out that entire third uh, base from uh, Jutai's army, and that's huge, man. All the drones are going down, and he's retained all these stalkers, although a yeah, lot of sentries are now back dead. is great. He's not taking tons of damage on these stalkers, blinking them back one at a time. This third is going to go down, it appears, and Jutai, for the first time now in a little while, Lobber has taken a supply lead. He's like, Jutai's mm -hmm. running up against a brick wall. His roaches are just disappearing time and again. But now we're going to start running out of sentries, and uh, that's going to mean it's going to come down to the Blink Stalker Micro. But I think he's got more than enough stalkers here to make this happen. Oh, no, absolutely. Plus two stalkers are great, although the roaches do have plus one carapace on them, so this will help a bit in the battle. I just don't think Jutai has the money for it. Look how much gas he has and how few minerals he has. He lost so many drones in that. He's actually down to 43 drones. He killed off 19 drones in that attack. Wow. The hatcher is now down, so that's less units. I think Lobber's going to be in. Jutai's going to cheat. There you go. Unbelievable. Wow, Lobber, you had a plan. I'm sorry I ever doubted you, sir. Yeah, that's what we get for doubting, but uh, it, it, it was a different build. I'm going to go back in and re I'm, I'm going to study this build here. 
I, I think that he did make a couple mistakes, but I want to filter through and see where, you know, he, where some of those things that he was doing was purposeful. And uh, so really interesting stuff, making a phenomenal play in game number one. Lobber taking an early lead and this best of five. And we're going to go into game number two. It will be Jutai's map pick. We'll catch you guys then. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Knack. We've got that live tournament action continuing. It is tonight's Open Arena Tournament, game number two, here in the finals between Lobber and Jutai. It's been a nice series thus far. I'll tell you, game one was quite interesting. We saw Wendy, we saw a build from Lobber that was a little bit unorthodox, I think, in my opinion. It, it, just the timings are different than what I'm used to. And I, is that something that you've seen from Lobber time and again, that he comes up with his own builds? I, I, I know he's a metagamer in his own, and, and he yeah. drives the metagame in very many respects. I'm you know what, I've guy never, guy. yeah, I've never seen that build out of Lobber before, ever. And he's actually gonna go ahead and forge fast expand. I wonder if he's gonna do a similar build. What's interesting about a player like Lobber, he's a very dedicated player. He reminds me of a lot of Tyler, Liquid Tower, Liquid Noni, um, a lot of Kiwi Kaki. They have all these crazy little refined idiosyncratic builds that just somehow work. Right. Now, if you can imagine if that push came, he delayed Warp Gate for quite some time. Like, I think a full 30 seconds or 40 or 45 seconds, he oh, delayed yeah. his Warp Gate. It was game. almost a minute. It was crazy long time before he got it going. And he only spent two chronos on it, too, which really was strange. I mean, he yeah, just I, I very just, little on there, which I guess is okay, but he got it out so late, it just, it was a little strange. And I think that's part of it, is like, he somehow knew that if I delay my, my warp gate by this X amount of time, I'm therefore able to get out eight stalkers twice in a row. Right. And have a whole bunch of sentries to build up energy from the start, because you saw him get that second gate way before his cybernetics core. Right. And then you saw him delay his warp gate, get his twilight council out, and then start blink, and it just, he, it, it was just a very odd, but we're Fine, you can sell that that build once it actually panned out. Whether there was a few hiccups in there or not, had a very distinct purpose, and I right. think that's very interesting. Players with their flying builds are very difficult to beat. Yeah, like, it's true. I, and he's he dry, He's so it's not. It doesn't come down to execution for Lobber. It comes down to you need to know what this guy's doing mm -hmm. because he could be doing anything. He's not like some players that you see are just really good at executing certain builds that everybody else already knows, yeah. right? Uh-oh. And Lobber being clever right now. Uh -oh. Look at that. He's put the pylon on the high ground just at the vision of both the hatchery <laughs> and the and the Zenona who's just running around furiously looking for that pylon. And Lobber, you clever, clever man. I have to say, this is going to be unbelievable. And once that pylon goes, and that cannon goes down, and it's going to make a lot of problems for Jutai. At the very least, it'll pull, force him to yeah, pull down. One down on the bottom so, uh, here. Three more cans going down. Wow. <laughs> a lot of coming very hard to this. He'll be able to cancel the uh, the uh, the cannon on the high ground right. once and the drone gets out there. One on the low ground in the back is going to go untouched. And so this is so sm such smart play from Lobber. What an interesting placement there. I love it. Do you, uh, have you seen anything like that before? I remember seeing something like this from Cheetah Prime. This is yep, Cheetah and, Prime. And uh, he should cancel that. Uh, yeah, he does cancel the cannon on the top ground. Uh, you should cancel that one. Yep. And look at that. Lobber getting his money back. Going to go ahead and throw down one more cannon. He just wants to do as much damage as he possibly can. And the, I don't even know if that cannon's in range of the hatchery, but it doesn't even matter. He's going to kill drones. And is it in range? I no, don't think it is, but the second one definitely is. Right. And he's just going to keep on the cannon rush. And this is the problem with Zerg going hatch first against Protoss and Forge Fest expands. You can quite easily lose the game right from the get-go. Once this third, these uh, third and fourth cannons finish up, it could be game right here. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is a scary, scary deal for G. He's down to 11 drones, man. I mean, this isn't like a bunker rush because these uh, these these photon cannons will take this hatchery down so much faster. There's the wow. GG. Wow. Lobber. I, you know what? <laughs> a lot of people... Man, I, I just love... Oh, I really do love these tournaments. They bring out just such good players. Like, this isn't, you know, the top, like, GSL-level play, but I'm sorry. Good luck beating close, some of yeah. these guys, because this, this is what Lobber does. Like, he's taken a year off of life, pretty much, to try and do StarCraft. Right. Beautifully done. Thank you guys for coming out. That is two games in a row, and now we're headed into Game 3, where it is match point for Lobber. We'll see you guys in just a moment.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Knack. We do have that live tournament action continuing here. Game number three, Wendy. Game number three in the finals tonight, and it is currently 2-0 in favor of Lobber. Jutai is not a weak player by any means. Uh, why, do you think the, why do you think he's having trouble here against Lobber? Honestly, I don't know. I mean, Does Lobber the first game? Lobber just being crazy train and <laughs> pulling out the craziest builds we've ever seen? <laughs> I wouldn't have to call his builds crazy. They're just very refined. And they have a sole purpose. It's, here's right. the thing about Lobber. That first game on Antigua Shipyard, that 8-gate all-in, it was an all-in. You don't go 8-gates and expect to, you know, macro out of it. Right. You just can't. It's just not possible. Had that failed, would have been game. He's actually going to go ahead and forge fast expand on this. Maybe he's kind of taking a little bit of a liberal uh, decision that his opponent is going to go ahead and take um, a... Uh, <laughs> Lob or something nice. <laughs> Get ahead and go for uh, take a hatch first, just because. Uh, well, it's Metalopolis. Protosses usually don't forge fast expand on this map unless you know they're TT one, which is probably or, or uh, trying to think of other big macro Protoss players. Yeah, I mean it's it's definitely a risk. It's difficult to wall off here. The Zerglings still have even up, even after you've walled off, the Zerglings still have pretty good access to your main uh, behind yeah, the mineral And Jutai is up to 15 drones. Uh, yeah, so he's going to go hatch first here, it appears. Yeah, this is this is getting interesting right now. Pass the mark. Yep, there he goes. And Oh, this could be really bad. Yeah, this could be really, really bad for Jutai. I really like Lobber's decision here. Um, he's got that got forge going down. There's a good possibility we see more cannons here. Yeah, I don't blame him. I wouldn't think as a Zerg player that Frotoss would ever forge fast expand this map. That's probably the one map you don't want to do it on. <laughs> the there goes it the... is. Yeah, and so he, one thing he can do is put he can see what he's going to do is wall this off. This is the this is a cheetah prime move. Uh, so you wall this off, put the cannon in the back, but this is going to take some horrendous micro uh, from Lobber with just one probe. It's going to be very difficult. Yeah, well, actually, he cancels the pylon. I I'm... think that's the right decision. And unless maybe he's going to go for put him somewhere well, else, but no, he's you can put a pallon between yeah you can put the pallon between the two uh, gases right there right a the little uh, cove right there and then one one right over there and then put the cannon down and right. put your probe there to block and uh, so right. long as you're as long as you can buy yourself enough time you actually get the cannon up and you can even build a third once that pylon's up you actually get a uh, third cannon or a third cannon or a second cannon uh, where that gas is uh, to the right of the innermost gas and Auburn's right. going back for it man no. Uh -oh. Jutai, he pulled those drones and he started having a mine long distance. I disagree with that decision here, uh, but we do see the hatchery now getting done, but after these guys have made two solid passes back to the main, so he did lose some mining time there. A little bit of poor decision making in my opinion at this point. Uh, but yeah. Lobber getting a great scout out. He does see the spawning pool. No gas quite yet from Jutai, and uh, we're getting into a third base uh, right now. And a fast start, and that could very easily be cannon rush. If Lobber right. just has to make one pylon out of vision that hatchery, and uh, I don't think that hatchery sees him. And uh, <coughs> no wings out on the way either, even though the pool's finished. No queens out either. Uh, okay, starting one queen now. And you can kind of see how poor decisions out of Jutai are starting to compound now. His pool's finished, but he's not going to be able to afford queens. And that's a big, big problem against Protoss. You need to have creep spread. You need that. You need to be aggressive on the map. And uh, well, seven and score only. You gotta have your, you've gotta have your inject larvas out in time too, because yeah. I mean, a forge fast expanding Protoss. When it comes down to it, they will outproduce you. It, you know, like around the eight minute mark, and so he could be expect. You know, he can probably expect to see an attack come out from from Lobber around that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, there goes down the Stargate. So it will be a Stargate build. Interesting positioning. Um, it yeah, might like be a little that. bit. Might be a little bit vulnerable to that overlord that might come in and swoop in, but uh, off only two gas, which is kind of unusual. You usually don't see many Protoss players go off of only two gas before the five minute mark right. to get that uh, Stargate. So it probably will be just be the only Stargate, probably one void rated three Phoenixes, and probably transition to maybe like a five or six gate pressure. Maybe if you swing really macro intensive, go for that four gate, because this is one of the few maps where, even though it's very difficult for Protoss to expand, if you could take that third, very easy to build three gateways and a couple cannons to wall off that third ramp, right. and you really don't have to worry about that, unless a Baneling Buster would be coming through there, which is very unlikely in current uh, current uh, ZVP metagame. Right, it's yeah, not a bad decision to try and play a macro game here. Yep, and still no scout out on the Stargate. We are Corona boosting out our first Void Ray. And he's looking to be in great shape here, but that third base is up and running for Jutai, but checking in on the units tab. 
He's just barely starting to take a lead here economically, and he does not have out the attacking units necessary for defense at this point. He is yep. behind. He's tossing down his Evo chambers right now. This Void Ray, I think, is going to be able to do a lot of damage. I mean, he's actually taking all four gases once with only 33 drones out, which I kind of disagree with. You really want to take about pretty much two gas and you pour per 40 drones, which is kind of a rough estimate. It really depends on the kind of build you're going. He's getting roaches out, so and he's probably going to maybe go for a quick layer with roaches with an upgrade right on top of it. Right. That's maybe what I'm, I'm going to assume, because there's no reason to get that much gas early on, even off of three base. It's just too risky. Right, I agree. Now we do have we he did turn his voider around to pick off that overlord. He saw the overlord said I'm going to pick this off, so he turned his voider around. So he's not springing this on his opponent's base. But notice that Jutai is not picking up any um of his uh, spore crawler. Oh, there he goes. He's putting down two yeah. spore crawlers right now in his natural none in none the main isn't. quite yet. And two of the third. Two of the third is probably the better decision just because that's usually the most vulnerable location because not going to be connected by creep. Only going to have one clean over there at the very least, although he does have two. Yeah, so Jutai spreading main... creep there, which is so smart yeah. from Jutai. I love that. I love spreading creep here early game, which actually we're starting to approach the mid game quite yeah. honestly. But, I mean, here comes your Phoenix and your Void Ray not too far behind. And Oh, he actually did go to double Stargate. Defense. Oh, wow. I didn't even notice. I didn't not even know he threw down the second Stargate. Where is it? And not, oh, uh, it's right in the main. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Now he's uh, Lobber's getting up to that saturation point. I wonder what he'll do. I wonder if he'll maybe uh, go ahead and take a third nexus because he just he does have a uh, map control with these air units. Um, you go two queens going to work on that voider. He needs to be very careful with that. It's actually taking a little bit of hole damage. Uh, charge is now gone too. Uh, with those spore callers there, they're so good at dealing damage to directed units. If you could focus the spore callers on a single. Uh, Voider, they go down very quick. Yeah, we saw him charging up on the the Manx statue, which is so smart. He's charging up, he charged up on it, and then he kept his charge by attacking his Phoenix for half a second, which was just brilliant. Mm -hmm. Great yeah, yeah. out of him. Yep, He's yep. Up and, third. <laughs> yeah, I, and I don't don't hate that decision. It's a smart thing. He hasn't built. He's only built one gateway. He's got these stargates out. It's going to keep his opponent on his back foot. At least keep him in his base. Uh, I don't feel like any Zerg player is going to be willing to go ahead and charge forward knowing that his opponent has a ton of air units on the field because Voiders are very good against the Roaches. You wouldn't think it, but they do dam uh, plus damage versus armor, and he has five Void Rays out now, man. He's going to start blasting away now at the Overlords. He's going to supply block Jute, but Jute did plan ahead a little bit here, overproducing Overlords there just a little bit. Which I think yep, and, oh, he's actually going to charge up in the hot. He cancels the hydro hydro list, and that's not the biggest deal. They do, does build very quickly, but it's enough to delay. He's picking up three queens right now. They're all going to get popped. No turn fusions <laughs> going down, and that's that's great for um, Lava right now. He's doing what he needs. These void rays and phoenixes retaining them. They're worth their weight in gold at this point in time. And he will get that, charging up a little bit on the neutral spot depot. He needs to be a little careful right now. He's getting in range of a lot of spore crawlers, but I think he's just going to say, I have too many void rays here to not be aggressive. Like, I need right. to take advantage of this. Char One charge does up. go down, and, but yeah, he's charged up now, and I, I yeah. expect to see this base completely fall. I mean, what, oh, what yeah. can he do? He's Now Now Jutai is way behind in tech to deal with this. He doesn't have yeah. the hydras out quite yet. 19 he's hydras on the way, though. Got him on the way, right, but, uh, but so late, and the damage is being done here. I mean... Mm -hmm. And don't forget, phoenixes do bonus damage to light to light units like hydras. So if there's eight phoenixes out with a lot of energy. He could very easily lift up a whole bunch of hydras as soon as they pop out and deal a lot of damage. And here they're coming out the hydras. Does Jutai react in time? Lifting up one, two, three, four, five hydras going down. I think Lobber might outstay his welcome though. He's going to go uh, head on against these uh, hydras. And wow, looks like he's able to clean up a good majority of them. Jutai falling under 61 supply. And, That's unbelievable. Wow. Uh, it's unbelievable what he's being able to accomplish here. This is phenomenal micro from him. Yeah, There's he's now out of energy. He's squeezing so, yeah. through, and they're going to be hitting the third here. Looks like Lobber mm -hmm. is going to be able to deal with that with in pretty decent style, but going to take a little bit extra he's gone, damage. He's making a third Stargate, but he's been on two Stargate this whole time and only one gateway. Yeah. And he's That's now uh, take, trying to take out those roaches head-on with one zealot. Uh, I think he should definitely back up and try to... Um, try and draw him into the... Cannons. Cannons, yep. yeah. He's going to lose and, uh, that stalker, Phoenix. unfortunately, but the Phoenix will be able to clean up here. And Lobber's on the third, and he's way ahead of the opponent in terms of economy. He is on uh, 92 to 75 supply, and most of the, uh, most of which are just uh, workers for Jutai at this point in time. So he can, he's finding himself in a very skinny situation. He's taking a little bit of a ninja fourth over here. Not <laughs> yeah, a bad I, decision. It's not. It's not a bad decision. It, it's kind of an interesting one. It is going to put him behind in his army composition for now. Uh, so wow, is he just... There's a fleet beacon. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. I, we're gonna see. We're gonna see. A there's no, we're there's, gonna see carriers. Yeah. Okay. No. They're, they're say, like, there's only one gateway. There's five more gateways going down. So it's gonna be three Stargate, Fleet Beacon with a really early mothership. Perhaps is he getting upgrades on his? Did he get any upgrades on his? Yeah. He got plus uh, plus one on his air units too. Yeah. Uh, not bad. And, uh, we, there's a good possibility we even see a carrier here. Carriers are not a bad choice. Um, in this particular advantage. situation, yeah, yeah because yeah, he oh, does have an Bob advantage. going to find this third or this fourth. Actually, he's just going to leave it alone. Um, he did interesting, scout, though. So that's kind of oh, interesting. turning around. Yeah, turning around now, he's going to say, "Well, there free base. Might as well just take it out. No reason not to." And those voidoids get a full charge in it, and it just wow, he yeah, is. This is crazy. I mean, Blobber is is really got control of game number three here. It is his match point. 2-0 right now, and there's a good possibility he takes it down here relatively soon. We do have carriers on the way, two of them. We're also working on Protoss Air Weapons Level 2, as well as Ground Weapons now Level 1. Yeah, and two carriers on the way. Now, if you could be so kind to explain to our uh, lower league players out there, what's so great about Protoss on 3-base versus uh, Zerg on 3-base? Uh, the nice thing for being a Protoss on 3-base is you, you have the economy to tech anywhere you want. You can do anything you want tech-wise, number one. You can also work non-stop on double upgrades for any tech pattern you've chosen. You can even work on upgrades for two tech patterns, so air and ground at the same time, with absolutely no trouble. And uh, I mean, that is the beauty of being on three base as, as Protoss. Yeah. And we've got these guys poking in uh, at the third. Not very small happen. force at a due time. Very, very small force. Oh, Infestors small. on the way, though. Too small, don't you think? I mean, Jutai is. I don't think he intended to do damage there. He just wants to poke around and see what's going on. Mm, and, and none of these uh, units have upgrades either. And you can see the uh, graviton catapult, which is the uh, more infester or uh, excuse me, more intercept upgrade for the carriers, is now on the way. And so uh, smart. Oh, I mean, he's in great, great position. And I just love that Lobber has great play. All, all his units, all his air units, hockey to one hockey. It's a interesting choice there. <laughs> And uh, here he goes. If he's he's leaving his face uh, stuck with a little bit of damage, not sure why. Maybe just not paying attention. Yep. And uh, gonna go ahead and take out this hatch before it even gets out. I expect to cancel out of Jutai. Yep, there it goes down. And we've got uh, these zealots up here at the third. They're doing a decent amount of damage here. They poked in, killed a couple of drones, and uh, did some damage to the infestors, which is gonna be bad news as we move forward here. These infestors. And are gonna we fall we we have a so mothership fast. on the way, sir. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We should see some chronos go down on that. But in the meantime. Look at this. That's a lot of void rays, and guess how many carriers yep. he's got here. And it's going to take a, um, it was going to go ahead and take out a ladder <coughs> that was morphing into Hive, and that's huge. Yep. And uh, he doesn't get to cancel on the upgrade, so you're not refunding that movie Spire, uh, that money, excuse me. So that, two Spires are now here that allow for double upgrades, but Jutai, a lot of minerals, not a lot of gas. That is right. a big problem. He's actually getting eight corruptors. I don't think it's going to be enough, considering it there's it. now two, uh, two carriers, oh, there's two four carriers, ten Phoenixes. Eight void rays, twenty-four interceptors, and six zealots with a maxed out um, Protoss on three base, going up to fourth base now. Well, Actually, look at these zealots up at the third. They're trying to take down this hatchery. If, if they can't, oh, the will they this get it? Big. Oh, they don't get it! <laughs> oh man, and this and is Jutai so big. Got to gotta be feeling he's on the ropes right now. He has so much um, money he's banked up, but he doesn't have the lava to do anything with it. He he's only on has two one hatches. mining base. He's on one mining base. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just try to max out as quick as possible, and there he goes, making uh, six more corruptors. I would just try to get as many units out as I possibly could at this point in time, and just try to hit my opponent before yeah. he can get to that maxed out point with the mothership. But mothership, fifteen seconds away, my friend. Yeah, I mean he's he's the trouble for Jutai is he just isn't going to have an answer uh, upgrade wise to this army. He's just been on the ropes for so long here. Lobber is, I mean, he's already at, at plus two on his air units. He's picking up plus three. It's almost halfway done. Yeah, is and he chronic? He's not even chronic it out. Yeah, and this is a critical mass of carriers. We're going to see that. Uh, where's the mothership? Uh, it's coming out of the natural. Oh, there which, it is. Uh, yeah, I can see it. Yeah, no so worries. there goes your mothership. Mothership is going to be phenomenal here for some um, good old mass recall if you want. Yeah, do, or, do, do those investors have. Um, are they even still alive? Yeah, they're still. Where are those investors? Do they have neuroparasites? They do not. Max uh, point here. I mean, this is brutal. Yeah. This is a. This is just unorthodox, man. That's all I have to say about it. Lobber <laughs> putting on a show, to say the very least. Oh, absolutely. And I would see him. He would have to really try to lose this game, taking out that uh, building base mothership now out, cloaking all those gorgeous air units. And I've never seen air protoss. Oh, it's so it's so difficult because you have to get a if you're going to go carriage you have to you be have able to, to get a critical the mass 
Yeah, yeah you have yeah. to get a critical mass minutes. early before they attack you. Because if you have just two carriers, well, I, I mean, give it, I don't know, all you they really need is like eight. Yep, and here comes a link run by into the uh, fifth over here in the southern natural. Uh, Cannon's doing a good amount of work. They probably will be able to take off a few simulators. More cannons going down. Uh, Phoenix is coming over to pick off Ling's. Perhaps here not comes the your best. Corruptors too. They're yeah. going to try and get into the backside yeah. of this, but I think this and is going to go well. And they're going to try and take out the mothership. Oh, Vortex goes down. Oh my god. Such a smart decision. Is he going to fire the mothership into the uh, Vortex? Uh, looks like he's going to fire. Mothership can't go into the Vortex. No, That's it can't interesting. Can't go into its own Vortex. It can fly right it over top of it though. It's a bunch of infested Terrans going down. Uh, Labyrinth needs to be very, very careful here. Uh, Corrupt is coming out. Oh, big fungal growth going down. Festeran is going to be able to do done work, tons of work. This might be bad news for Lobber. A lot yeah. of insect interceptors doing a ton of work, and uh, investors now being picked up. And Jutai, GG. There you go. Game three. <laughs> he gives Corrupt the grats too. Gotta love that guy's manners. I mean, he's got such a great attitude here, don't you think? Oh yeah, and uh, great job to both players. Tough game for Jutai. Man, yeah. Lobber is just like. He's on fire, what can I say? And that does win him an invite to our AGL Monthly. It is going to be taking place next week. So congrats to both of these guys. Both of them did place in the money. So Jutai, while he did lose this match, is definitely not a loser. He come in, comes in second place there, and that's big. I mean, that's a couple bucks there. And uh, So thank, thanks to, for everybody for coming out tonight, and all of your support is much needed and much appreciated. Um, and Wendy, pleasure casting with you as usual. Pleasure with you, Nick. Great games tonight. Go check us out on Twitter, T Liquipedia. We're on Facebook too, right? Yep. Yep. Check us out, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, all those beautiful media outlets that help esports so much. Yep, absolutely. That's it bump, bump, and we will see you guys. Uh, let's see, Tuesday night is going to be our last open arena. arena. Yep, last yeah. one before the monthly. Yep, yep, and don't forget that is on Wednesday, 22nd, and Thursday, Friday, you'll be doing uh, all the cast member plays that were not aired live, and then Saturday will be the finals for um, the semifinals and the grand finals. Correct. Going to be tons and tons of fun. We will see you guys then. Remember, wild tab when you can alt StarCraft.